Go outside and look around. Pay attention to the men. What do you see? Fat guys, muscular guys, stylish guys, of course. Look up higher. What's something that most men you see will experience? Hair loss. Two thirds of men will experience hair loss by 35 and 85% by age 50. Some embrace it and shave it and props to them. Many let it progress, cover it up with a comb over or are just in denial. Others do everything they can to keep it. I chose to fly across the world to maintain these little protrusions of protein on my head along with daily medications. So let me tell you about my journey. It would be fitting first for me to start from the beginning. This is my dad. This is my dad at my current age, 26. Greeks are one of those ethnicities that experience hair loss at the highest rates, so I was doomed at birth. But why does hair loss happen? There are different types of hair loss. Some include telogen effluvium and alopecia areata, which are patchy or diffuse thinning, and they're usually related to autoimmune issues, stress, or diet. But what I experience, along with probably billions of other men in the world, is male pattern baldness. There are many theories to why this occurs. The most common is a potent male hormone called DHT attacking those hair follicles, causing them to get smaller and smaller and eventually no longer grow. There are other theories that include reduced blood flow, increased local inflammation, vitamin deficiencies. So when people are castrated back in the day, think of Varys in Game of Thrones, they don't experience hair loss and many bald trans women are actually able to regrow their hair back. So the DHT theory is more prevalent. That brings us to Puberty Christian. I first noticed my hairline receding and thinning at 16. Was I this big muscular kid with all this DHT? Nah. I couldn't fathom why my hair was thinning this early on. Really made no sense. I had this big, long, swoopy hair, so hair was tied to my identity at the time. I immediately began applying minoxidil foam to my hairline in efforts of maintaining what I had. It worked for a bit. I didn't lose much more hair for another few years, but come 18, oh shoot. I noticed I was shedding and my hair was getting thinner and wispier on my hairline again. I went to the doctor who confirmed my worst nightmare. You're balding. I was put on Propecia or Finasteride, the most common hair loss medication at 18 years old. Fast forward to around 22, I had taken Finasteride along with topical minoxidil for a few years now, but I wasn't regular with it. Sometimes running out of my prescription, being irresponsible with forgetting to refill. So my hair loss hadn't rapidly progressed, but it hadn't stopped. So my hairline got farther back and I began developing a thin spot on my crown. At this point, I had been re researching for hours each week on how to stop this. My stress levels got higher with the process and at 23, I started med school. The stress in my life only got higher. I developed the most feared side effect of finasteride, low libido. Guess what I did? I stopped it. That was a mistake. My libido didn't change and my hair loss rapidly progressed. The stress of school on top of strict diets to get really lean did a number to my hair. My libido did come back eventually and I started finasteride again in hopes of halting further loss. This time, no side effects. I got tricked into thinking that stress, or rather finasteride was what causing my problems when it was the stress. I was really insecure hated how my hair looked, but I was lucky to have a social media following. I checked my messages one day to find that a hair transplant company in Turkey reached out to me and offered a hair transplant. I did my research, I waited about a year, and then more companies began reaching out. I eventually went to Now Hair Time for my first hair transplant in December of 2021. I was deep in my third year of med school, and after some virtual consultations on WhatsApp, I flew alone to Istanbul over the winter break and got almost 3,000 grafts on my head. You know, mostly on the hairline, but around my head too. So Christian, why Turkey? Turkey really is one of the hair transplant capitals of the world. People fly there for hair transplants, rhinoplasties, breast augmentation, veneers, you name it. The quality is top notch, but a mere fraction of the cost of other countries. In the US, for what I got, I would probably be paying around 20K. Round trip in Turkey, the whole trip probably cost around five or 6K. And really the biggest thing with this is just being patient. It takes around three or four months for your hair to come in. So I was just buzzing it short until it did come in but when it did, it looked awesome. It was still thin on my crown though, so this takes me to transplant round two. I always needed a second hair transplant. In my first consultation, I was told that my donor area was a little bit on the weaker side, so I'd require two procedures to get full coverage to avoid over harvesting, which would damage my scalp. So what is the donor area? Basically the sides and back of your head. Think George Costanza. That hair is permanent, baby. If you have thick sides, you might be a good candidate for a hair transplant. 
So I eventually flew out again. Hello, my friend. I am in the Now Hair Time van, just being picked up. It is Thursday, March like 2nd or something like that. Um, this is the first day of my hair transplant process. Um, really, the first day is just going to the hospital and getting blood work. Just wanna make sure that I am healthy and can tolerate a procedure on my head. So just gonna chill. It's actually a pretty neat um, van. They have a TV where you can see like results. They have a bunch of snacks of like Turkish goodies that I can definitely eat too many of. And yeah, so that's pretty much like the first step. Here's my review of this cake. It is literally just like a cake in a package. I'm gonna give it about a seven out of 10. It's kind of like a chocolate Twinkie of sorts. All right, so I literally could not have filmed anything with that. Um, we just pulled up to this like hospital. You know, they took my passport just to like make sure I'm registered. And then I went to this room with this nurse and she just drew my blood, took like two or three vials of like, you know, blood. She was very gentle. 10 out of 10 job with her on that. Um, I also did like an EKG. So they put leads, you know, around my heart just to make sure, you know, my heart could tolerate the procedure. But it was like pretty straightforward. I was probably there like five minutes and now I am back to my hotel. So the procedure is tomorrow. Still don't know what time I'm being picked up yet. Um, now hair time like, you know, messages me on WhatsApp about like, you know, what time I'm being picked up the next day just so I'm ready. But I'm assuming, you know, sometime in the morning. Good morning, friends. Today is day two. I am on my way to the Now Hair Time Clinic. It's about 30 minutes from the hotel that I'm staying at. Today is the day of my procedure. So I'm going to the clinic now, just like sign some paperwork, um, you know, decide what we're gonna be doing to my hairline, do a little bit more of a consultation. Um, and so I'll keep you posted along the ride. Um, the procedure is mostly gonna be on my crown, I'm sure, just to fill in some density, but I'll keep you posted as I go through it. Uh-oh, bye-bye. Stone Cold Steve Austin in the cut. On the way to the hospital right now. We just did some planning at the clinic. Um, just drew some lines on my head, checked out the density of my donor area and saw like, you know, where they could put it to kind of like maximize things for me. So that's the plan. And on the way to the hospital for the procedure right now. You need to shave your head to properly extract the grafts. Here's how it works. First, you're numbed up, which is really the worst part. It hurts so much when they inject it in for about five or 10 minutes. I shudder at the thought, but it is tolerable with some breath work. Take those deep breaths. Once you're numb, they inject more fluid to make it easier to extract the grafts. With the FUE technique, the surgeon cuts little holes throughout the sides and back of your head while removing the graft. This takes around two or three hours. Then I had a little break where I scarfed down a huge meal. This particular time, my second time around, I had the DHI technique, which loads those grafts onto a little pen and then creates a hole on the top of your head and places the hair in in one step. And this is better for density and a lot easier to recover from. To fill in those bald spots though, you need FUE, which cuts holes in your head and then places the grafts in separate steps. There's more swelling on this one, which I did my first time. Hello, so I am back in the van. I feel like I'm talking this whole video from this van, but as you can see, I do not have my bandage on anymore. So I went to the clinic where they kind of took off the bandage, make sure everything looked good. They washed my head and that's pretty much like the last visit I will need there. So I'm pretty much done now. Um, they gave me a gift, gave me some Turkish delights. So I'm probably gonna eat those on my drive now to the hotel. Leaving tomorrow, you know, everything is going well. They gave me some aftercare instructions on how to like wash everything. Um, I also helped them film like a little YouTube video, which was nice. But overall, you know, pretty good experience. Now for aftercare. I can't touch my head for 10 days, which sucks because it's itchy. I have to sleep on my back for 10 days to avoid displacing those grafts and losing them forever. And it also avoids swelling buildup. But remember that that hair that I have on my head is now permanent, but the hair that was there before it is still susceptible to hair loss. So I need to maintain that. So what am I doing? I'm using finasteride daily, one milligram. I'm looking into dutasteride. Finasteride blocks around 70% of the conversion to DHT, while dutasteride does about 99% actually. And this is just gonna depend on how my hair loss progresses and of course, side effects. So next, topical minoxidil twice daily. This is a vasodilator that opens the blood flow to the scalp, which works twice as effectively with topical tretinoin or Retin-A, which is a skin regenerator based off of vitamin A. Also microneedling, which is just cutting a bunch of little holes in your scalp to enhance medication absorption with a little tool is something I do as well. I also wash my head with a ketoconazole based shampoo twice per week, which is shown to help hair loss a little bit, but it's on the lower evidence side. Lucky me, I get to do all this stuff. So my recommendation to you is if you're losing your hair and you're feeling distress, first shave it right now. Yeah, shave your head, do it. See how it looks. Are you getting compliments? Feel badass? Want to get jacked? Great, you'll look great with a bald head. 
If you're feeling a little bit of distress, maybe go see a doctor and start finasteride and minoxidil. There's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of guys on this medication. Side effects do happen, but you will always hear the louder ones on the internet. I mistook my loss of libido for finasteride, but it was actually the stress of med school. So these will be your first bet in stopping hair loss. If you want to further in those bald spots or retain some more density that's gone, I'd recommend reaching to Now Hair Time. I have their number in the description. Also, these are some of their prices. Um, I got the DHI technique. Very affordable, a lot easier than doing it in the US. You get to take advantage of some cheap, delicious food in Turkey. And my partner and I got a like really nice dinner on the marina for less than $50. And it's just like a nice experience. Everyone's very welcoming and friendly, very professional overall. So I would definitely recommend the experience in general. So that is my hair transplant and hair loss journey. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions about it all, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to help you out. And other than that, if you enjoyed the video, toss a like and subscribe for more videos on being the best you.